Hello there. Welcome to another video of Senator Viran Ads. In this video, we will talk about Google Analytics for beginners. If you haven't worked on Google Analytics before or know a very little about Google Analytics, this video is for you. Now, in this video, we will talk about Google Analytics UA, which is Universal Analytics, which will be clear in a few slides. Now, what is Universal Analytics and what are the other versions of Google Analytics? I will explain that while we are going through the video. Now, before we start, in this video, we will cover access how to access Google Analytics as well as demo account. If you do not have access to any Google Analytics account, we will talk about Google Analytics hierarchy, which is very important for you to understand. Otherwise, I have seen a lot of students getting confused between the hierarchy. What is a property? What is a view? So I'll just give you a, an overview with some examples. And then I'll tell you about different types of reports that we will and how to use them in Google Analytics, as well as some basic terminology for you to understand the report and basically use Google Analytics and after that we will quickly go through the admin settings that what are different settings and how can you change stuff uh, if you want to and then basic integrations and how to schedule reports which is a very commonly used uh, feature in Google Analytics uh, please bear in mind that Google Analytics is a very vast topic I will definitely have a series a full course on Google Analytics but this video is just for people who do not want to be professionals in Google Analytics and just want to use Google Analytics for certain reports. For example, if you are in a marketing team and you, you basically have to analyze Google Analytics reports sometimes, or you are a, a website owner and you just want to analyze about the traffic and get some insights. So basically after this video, you will be able to analyze basic reports in Google Analytics and you will be able to navigate through Google Analytics to find information, whatever you are, uh, you want. And then I will have, and you will obviously have an overview of Google Analytics, its capabilities, what it does and all that information. Now, before we get started and we dive into the UI of Google Analytics, I just want to tell you some basic information if you already are not aware. So Google Analytics is a reporting tool. Some people get confused, very few, about Google Analytics being used to run campaigns or some people think they have a lot of ideas about it. But Google Analytics is just a reporting tool. It reports on the traffic details of your website or your app. That's all Google Analytics does. Okay, the second point is everyone can access Google Analytics uh, merchandise site. For example, you want to learn Google Analytics, but you don't have a website to put Google to integrate Google Analytics and analyze. So Google Merchandise Store is a website of Google. And for that Google Analytics account, Google has provided access to everyone. It's called a demo account. So you can analyze different kind of reports and basically and it has real time data as well and considerable amount of data. So you can learn everything, even if you don't have a website or access to any Google Analytics account. Now to I will put the link to the demo account in the description below. But just to give you an idea, if you want to access demo account, you go to Google, you search for Google Analytics demo account and you will get these results. If you see, you can click on here or you can sometimes get access to demo account link here. I click on this, you will be redirected to this particular help center article and you click on access the demo account and it will redirect you to this demo account here. So you don't need anything else. And if you already have analytics account, what you do is or you have access to any analytics account, you go to analytics.google.com. Once you go there, it will ask you to log in with your username and password, which is your Gmail username and password, which has access to this. Once you log in and you will be redirected to that relevant account. For example, right now I'm in Google Merchandise Store, but if you have access to any analytics account, you can just go there. If you have access to multiple accounts, so you can click here, all your, the ac accounts you have access to will be listed here. So you can go to any of those accounts. One more thing to understand is if you are a website owner, Google Analytics is a free tool. So anyone can use it for free, but it has a paid version as well, which is Google Analytics 360. Like we have Google Ads, which is free. And if you talk about DV360 or Campaign Manager 360, they are paid versions and much sophisticated versions. So that is the difference. But there will I will have another video on what are the difference between GA360 and Google Analytics uh, free version. And then we have uh, two versions of Google Analytics at the moment, which is Google Analytics Universal Analytics, which was 
old one launched in 2004 or something which was which has always been running and a lot of people most of the people are used to it and use it now recently which is october 2020 which is one year ago more than a year ago uh, google launched ga4 which is uh, like a different version altogether because it works in a different way uh, considering uh, we won't have third party cookies in the future and it's more uh, specific to having data from both website and uh, mobile app if you have both in one view uh, but if you understand Google Analytics Universal Analytics you will be able to uh, understand GA4 as well as of now Google recommends whoever has Universal Analytics on their websites to put GA4 as well but do not remove Universal Analytics and keep it there and keep both of them running simultaneously which is not a big difference but yeah but this video we will focus on universal analytics which is like the traditional the old google analytics version now when we go to our the ui you see here uh, you will have a lot of uh, details here you will have a lot of tabs but one thing you will observe is if you for example click on here on this tab here you will see all the accounts that you have access to. For example, I'm logged in with Senator Viranath's email address. So this email address has access to five different Google Analytics proper uh, accounts. Okay. But now, for example, let me go to Google Senator Viranath's account. If you see that I have multiple properties here and if I click on any of the properties, let's say, uh let's say this one blog you see there is something called views now now most of the people get confused between this now to give you an idea before we jump into actual google analytics i want to first make you understand what is analytics account what are properties and what are views so that you don't get confused with now going back here let me go to the hierarchy now see this is the probably the simplest google analytics hierarchy setup now you saw there is properties then there is account then there is views now in an ideal scenario i'll give you an example for example mr is a construction company okay they have a dedicated website for a project called mr hills mr hills is one of their projects so it has a website mrhills.com or .ae whatever so usually a company like that will create a google analytics account for each of their properties like each of their websites or each of their domains so now they have google analytics account set up for mr hills website now if you see then under this google analytics account they will create multiple properties for example google analytics property ua which is universal analytics and they will create one separate property for ga4 now under one more thing you have to remember is google analytics ga4 the new version does not have views under them so you have an account and you have a property but old one which is google analytics universal analytics has views under them now what these views were used for is for example as a general rule most of the companies used to follow this syntax one they would create a view which is raw data so everything that happens on the website is collected in this view view is like a kind of a profile like you create three different profiles under your google analytics property in one you say okay i just want to see data from ua any reports i generate they will they should be only uae geography or you can set up any rules or restrictions or any filters and create a separate view now you can do all of that in raw data where you don't have any filters as well but anytime you want to run a report for traffic for uae geography only you will have to again use those filters so it's like view is like you set up a view with different filters once for all and you don't have to add filters if you think that you are going to use those filters very uh, frequently that's one of the reasons and I, most of the companies would create one raw view where they will not apply any filters at all will have raw data there then they will have one test view for example you want to create a new test you want to set up a different goal which you will understand later what a goal is or you want to create different kind of events or do any testing so you do it in the test view because you don't want to 
I mean hamper or you don't want to ruin the data you have in raw data so you always keep one view where you don't apply any testing or any kind of uh, filters so in this test view you test everything before you apply it in the master view master view is like uh, a bit of clean data for example if I am a company let's say I work for boopin.com now in Google Analytics there will be a lot of people who will be visiting from our own company on our website let's say our web developers or anyone now I want to exclude that traffic which is internal company traffic so master view usually is like raw data you have you create a new view and you apply filters like exclude all internal company traffic or whatever you want so master view is usually what companies use for generating different kind of reports and anything new you want to implement in master view you first click on you do it in the test view and if you think it's working the implementation is correct then you replicate it in the master view one more thing you have to remember is why we create different views is in google analytics if you make any changes let's say for example i apply a new filter in my view that this view should only show uae traffic when I apply that filter, the changes in the reporting data collection will happen only after I make that change. It will not impact any data previously. So for example, if I apply in my master view, I apply a filter that, okay, I should in this view, I should only see UAE data. Now, if I generate a report after one week for last one month, it will only have UAE data for only after I made the changes for previous days it will have all the data that's why we have different kind of view setups and we keep one raw data view where we do not make any changes so that if we uh, think that we made any mistake in any filter or any data and we want to refer to the original data that's why we keep the raw data so this is one example again reiterating Google Analytics account MR as a company they have multiple properties multiple websites so they will create one google analytics account let's say for mr hills website under which they will create two properties let's say universal analytics and ga4 and ga4 universal analytics they'll create three sub views so you can generate like report for example because when you set up google analytics you know which view has what kind of filters so you can always go to raw data view or whenever you create a new property by default it creates all website data view so any view you want to create additionally you will have to manually do it so when you set up your analytics for the first time you set up an account one property and there will be one view automatically generated which is called all website data and you can change the names of that uh, anytime so usually people rename that all website data to raw data view it's just a naming convention now you can use this hierarchy in a lot of different ways let's take an example of MR again so let's say they create one Google Analytics account for whole MR company and for each property let's say they have MR Hills they have MR waterfront they have a lot of projects and each of these projects has a separate website so what they'll do is they'll create one Google Analytics property for each of their websites it can be true with uh, let's say bbc.com they'll create one property for bbc.com one property for bbc bbc.ae bbc.in so this is just an example so that's one more way to divide kind of uh, the property account and property and then under each for example mr hills they will have again raw data test view master view or they can have one more property here uh, under google analytics property uh, after google analytics property ua they will have one for uh, ga4 but ga4 cannot be a view under a property it always has to be a separate property so if you are using both GA uh, universal analytics and GA4 there will be definitely two properties separately you can even create a separate account for each of these properties but this is like how uh, different companies use uh, the hierarchy of account property and views I hope this is clear for now and it will be easy for you as well for example if your company gives you access to any of uh, the Google Analytics account you might get confused that what are these so usually if I have access to senator Viran ads I'll just see this one here and then under it I'll see properties 
for example i see here four properties blog blog ga4 see even you can recognize from here from this uh, number here it says ua which means this is a ua uh, universal analytics property and there's no ua here which means it's a ga4 property same thing here see buy me a coffee there is universal analytics property and there is uh, GA4 property under properties and apps and one more thing if you observe is if I click on a universal analytics property then you see views for example I just have one view here created and if you click on GA4 it will directly go to that property and there is no views here okay okay now that we are in uh, Google Analytics UI and it's a uh, universal analytics UI the GA4 looks a bit different and uh, before we start if you want to implement Google Analytics on your website and you haven't done that already, I will have separate videos, uh, video on my channel about how to create a Google Analytics account and how to integrate it with your website. It's super easy, but I have a separate video for that. Now, when you log into Google Analytics, you will first thing you have to check is which account, which property and which uh, view you are in. Make sure that you are in the correct view for us here, demo account, which uh, everyone has access to. I'll go to UA Google Merchandise Store UA property and then I'll go to master view. Now if you see on the left navigation panel, this is all you can do in a Google Analytics UI. Now home and customization will come back later because they are so there are certain things you can do there which will make sense to you once we are done with the reports. And there are these five types of reports you can generate in Google Analytics which is the main purpose of analytics. You just generate reports. And then there is attribution which is in beta which means it's not rolled out for everyone so it is still in beta they are testing it and will be rolled out for everyone later and then we have discover and then we have admin we will go through all of them what they mean but let's focus on the most important thing which is the reports so if you look here there are five types of reports you can do in google analytics each of these reports have a certain purpose and their name suggests what they are made for for example if you look at real-time reports real-time report is something which will give you reports about what is happening on your website now in real time and last 30 minutes like you want to see how many users are on the website you want to see how many sales did i generate you want to see how many lead forms were filled or you want to see where these users are coming from in real time then you go to the real time section and generate whatever report you want to which we will go through as well but i'm just giving you an overview to simplify everything for you <clears throat> then we have audience reports audience report is all about the audience if you want to know the age of users who are on your website if you want to know their demographics let me expand it a bit if you want to know what are their interests the people who are on your website the audience who are in your website you want to know about them which countries are they coming from you want to know what is their behavior you want to know what are they coming from mobile or desktop you want to know user flow anything about audience so if you want to know any report you want to generate any report about the audience who are on your website or who have been on your website in a certain day and range you will get that reports within the audience section the next one is acquisition as the name suggests anything you have to do with how did you acquire those users where did they come from did they come from paid campaign did they come from google ads campaign did they come from organic posts did they where they referred from any other website you have put links on so anything to do with where did you acquire the users all the website visitors or app visitors you have where did they come from what was the source did they search for google did they search about you on google were they looking for something on google and your website popped up was it through social media campaign was it through any other email campaign sms campaign and you can kind of monitor any reports that how is each source doing the type of traffic you get from social the type of traffic you would get from google what you can just monitor the quality of the traffic but it is all about the acquisition where did you get the users from the next one is behavior this particular report in this section you can generate reports like so for example audience you talk about people what are their attributes in acquisition you talk about where did you acquire them from what was the source but behavior is any reports after these users website visitors came to on your website you want to know anything after that what happened how much time did they spend or 
for example which website did they visit which site which links on your website did they visit what which page of your website did most of the users come on after that where did they go from there where did they exit where did they close your website on what was the exit pages what was your how what did they search on your site what was the time of your load time how much time does each page take on your website so anything about you want to generate reports on users behavior on your website that will be in this section we will go through each of them one by one i'm just giving you an overview then we have conversions conversions is all about setting up goals for example if i'm a real estate client my goal will be how many people downloaded the brochure my goal will be how many people filled a lead form on my website so if i'm an e-commerce website i'll set up goals like how many people added products to the cart how many people bought a product from my website for another website it might be probably how many people for a blog let's say how many people stayed on my website for 30 seconds or more how many people scrolled my website till the end how many people spent 30 minutes and more on my website how many people watched a video on my website so based on your nature of your website you can set up different goals and all of the reports related to these conversions so each of them is a conversion micro conversion macro conversion for example for an e-commerce site a micro conversion will be how many people checked a product how many people added it to the cart obviously for the macro conversion will be how many people actually bought the product so you can set up different kind of events goals and conversions on your website in your google analytics and you can generate any reports on those you can even create funnels that how many people for example if your website has a user journey people add uh, check a product people add to the cart people buy it so you can create a funnel and have a funnel look like each of the step how many people are going to the next step and how many people are dropping off to have uh, an understanding so that's about conversion reporting okay so let's dig uh, deeper in each type of reports now if i go to real time here i expand it now one thing you have to remember is in each of the sections of reports here what you will see is you will see an overview tab where you will get data in infographics like you will see graphs overall and then there will be dedicated sections let's say for traffic source for location for content and these will be mostly data in tabular form which is in tables now when i go to real time it will be repetition of the same so this overview tab takes reports from each of these sections so if i go to overview tab what you see first thing is you will see how many users are on your website at the moment which is 12 for google merchandise store for which we are on the which we are in google analytics property and if you see that it keeps changing in real time because this is a real time report as mentioned before so there are new users coming some exiting so it will keep a track in real time this is the only report which shows data in real time all the other reports will have a lag when you generate a report even for today they will show you data until maybe four hours ago so if you see the next thing you uh, can see here is it will show you how much traffic are you getting from mobile and how much from desktop it's very important to understand so that you adjust you know what is the priority of most of the users coming from on your website so you can basically prioritize that version of your website <coughs> and this section will show you page views per minute like every minute how many pages are being viewed on your website and this will show you per second how many new users are coming on your website this is for last one minute and this is for last 30 minutes and the next section you have here is top referrals like where are the referrals coming from which you will understand in acquisition reports but referral referral would mean like if your website is mentioned on any other website it can be facebook it can be somebody somebody's blog so it will show you here if there are users coming from any referrals similarly for social traffic if there are users coming from in real time from facebook and twitter links or any other social media platform and it will also show you top keywords if some people are searching for certain keywords on google ads and they are clicking on the results and coming to your website <clears throat> top active pages will be for example home page there are three users on home page now this is the another link where there's one user now one thing you have to understand is for example if your website is sanitor we run ads <clears throat> 
Google Analytics, whenever you are talking about uh, page links or page uh, pages in Google Analytics, it always skips the first primary domain. So if I have my website is senatorviranads.com, there are users there, it will only show a forward slash. If I have a page senatorviranads.com forward slash career, <coughs> here you will only see forward slash career and details about that page. So if you don't have any sub pages, people are on your main page, it will only show the forward slash. Google Analytics always skips the first domain across all reports. This is one thing you have to remember. And similarly, in this table, it will show you overall traffic, what percentage is on each page, which is like number of users on a certain page divided by the total number of users on your website. So now I hope you will understand on your website which page the users are on. So usually, if we see Google redesign apparel kits, you just copy this, append it to your main domain of your website. So it will take you to that page if you are not sure which page it is. And then the next section we have here is top locations. It will show you on like on a map that out of the users who are on your website at the moment, what are which countries are they coming from? For example, here these are from United States. This is from European countries and you can even in the location settings, you can check detailed. As I told you, this overview is like uh, data taken from all of these data types in showing you an overview. Now, if we go in real time, we go to locations. As I mentioned before, it will mostly show you data in uh, kind of tables. Here it will show you country wise where the reports are coming from and these uh, graphs about different countries and a more detailed view. Then you go to content. As I told you, real time shows you real time reports. Now you will see all of these reports detailed in the other sections. But for now, just to give you an idea, you will again see the table of each page, how many users, which you already saw in overview. Then you click on events where you will see what is what events are triggering at my website at the moment. For example, regular install install action is event action is installed. Three people are trying to install uh, the app now and product click three people are clicking three people have clicked in last 30 minutes about a particular product they clicked on the product to see the details and quick view click there is on google merchandise store there is on each product there's a quick view eye icon where you kind of see the product details uh, at a glance so that trigger is being fired twice as well and there's one more uh, organic install at the moment so usually these events are set up by the Google Analytics for example if you have Google Analytics of your company which is being handled by someone they create these events so this these are manually created events by each company so if you want to see these events for your website let's say for example you want to see brochure downloads and form fill you'll have to create these events which we can talk about in a detailed course but this is just an overview to understand how to use Google Analytics and conversions is again uh, so whoever is working on Google merchandise store uh, Google Analytics which is some Google employee they have set up these conversions like registrations purchase completed entered checkout so you create like I told you based on the nature of your website you create conversions what is important for you what is like a, a conversion you want to users to do on your website which can be firm fill for someone which can be sales for e-commerce websites uh, and maybe uh, signups for newsletters so all of that details so real time is like understanding what's happening now now let's jump into the second report type which is audience like I told you you have overview in each section if I click on overview of audience it will tell me any report you see apart from real time because real time will tell you uh, last 30 minutes any other report you check in Google Analytics make sure that you first check the date range because most of the times what happens is you're checking the data and they, later you realize that it's a default date range. So for example, if I want to check last one month or let's say month of December, I'll select 1st December to 12th December, which is today. And any reports I see now will be for this particular date range. Now, if you see here, it tells me that 
in total in last 12 days of December this is the users per day how many users visited my website every day so which is 2998 on first December and it will show you a daily graph if you see here or something happened on December 3rd that there was a spike in traffic uh, which obviously as a website owner you would know that did you run any campaign was there a particular offer on your website or what was the reason you will be able to analyze on the contrary if you run a campaign an sms campaign email campaign google search campaign you should be coming here and seeing okay is there an impact of that particular campaign we are running you will see here okay we started a campaign on december 6th and there is a spike or something like that then when you scroll down you see on the left hand side total there were 39,000 users on your website who visited in these 12 days of the date range we selected and out of them 35,000 were new users which means that there were 39,500 people who came to your website who entered your website out of those 35,000 were new and 4,000 the difference between them were returning users so there were 4,000 people who visited your website again so overall new users were 35,000 during this period and when we talk about sessions which is 48,288 now a session can differ on how you have set up your google analytics but by default every website has a session time let's say 30 minutes if a user comes to your website and he stays there for 31 minutes after 30 minutes Google Analytics will start another session. So one user came to your website, he stayed there for let's say 35 minutes. So there are two sessions counted for that particular user. So you will always see the sessions will be always either equal to users or more. Because if a user enters a website, there will be a session counted for it. So if a user stays more than a certain time, then there will be multiple sessions. So sessions will always be equal to or greater than the users on your website so number of sessions per user will be obviously sessions divided by users that on an average one user how many sessions did they create on your website then we have page views which is 258,000 page views is for example if I go to senatorviranads.com then I click on quiz page then I click on any other link on the website so I will visit multiple pages so it is showing you how many page views for example if a user comes to senator Viran ads they go to the home page they click on a certain link which is contact us that is two pages they click on a particular link on my website that is three pages so for that user Google Analytics will count as one user and three page views so page views will always be again greater than users and uh, or more because one user will at least a user will be only counted when he enters on your website so there'll be one page view counted then and there so then if they visit more links on your website it will be more page views now more the page views compared to the ratio of page views and users is more engaging your website that means if a user is coming onto your website they are visiting more pages they are stuck on your website for a while they visit different pages and, and it also gives an idea that your website is easy to navigate through because they can find more information interesting information and they are visiting more pages so pages per session is again uh, page views divided by sessions it gives you an idea that in one session how many pages does a user visit on your website average session duration is any users who came to your website how long does it when they create a session when a user enters your website one page view is counted and one session is counted and then how long did that users with stay on your website so it also gives you an idea that how engaging your website is for example on an e-commerce three minutes is a good time because usually people check the details of the product for example if you have a website with videos so obviously your average session duration should be much higher so this gives you an idea that how uh, long is our users staying on your website then we have bounce rate okay <clears throat> now bounce rate is very important to understand it's probably one of the most used uh, terms in Google Analytics a bounce rate is simply when a user comes to your website if they do not engage with your website they do not do anything and they just close the browser by default or they go to another website which means they came to your website and they did not interact they did not click anywhere they did not do any action on your website and they go to another website or close the browser 
which is called a bounce which is a bounce rate a 44.83% bounce rate would mean that 44.83 people who come to google merchandise store do not do anything and then they go to another website or close the close the browser they do not interact with your website anyhow they don't click on anything now higher the bounce rate means the quality of your website is bad it's not engaging but for example there are exceptions now let's say you are you have a blog where people come and they just come to let's say see a coupon code let's say an offer code they obviously will click on your website they go to your website they see the code is let's say off 50 and they'll close the browser obviously they, there's nothing to engage there so in those cases you cannot rely on bounce rate but usually if you have a blog you have <clears throat> you want people to go there watch videos click on stuff and contact you then bounce rate is a very important matrix to look at so that means it, it can mean a lot of things for example if your bounce rate is high you can say okay the quality of the traffic that is coming to my website is not good one because probably you are using paid ads and you are not targeting the audience who uh, you are intending to or your content is not engaging for them or they saw something in the ad they clicked on the ad but they don't find it uh, they came with a certain expectations and do not find it on your website or probably they saw an ad they clicked on it they came to your website the product you are selling is not uh, they don't like it so then the bounce rate will be high so this is a very important metric to 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 kind of understand your uh, page traffic so higher the bounce rate means bad call it traffic quality uh, it's not good for your website lower the bounce rate means your website is engaging and the quality of traffic is good <clears throat> the next we have here is demographics it will show you uh, you can click on let's say language it will show you what was the browser language of the users who came to your website for example 57 percent uh, browser language was set up to english us 16 0.99% was selected as English Great Britain. So it gives you an idea that the users who are using your website, what is their preference language in their browser. And again, you can click on country, you can click on city, which city did these users come from. You can click on browser, you can click on operating system, what were they using. So as I mentioned before, audience is all about the users which country which language which city so it gives you a very good idea that for example if you are an e-commerce website and you are selling products and uh, in just uae now if you're getting traffic outside the, the country it's not a good thing either uh, your paid ad campaigns are bringing traffic from other campaigns the targeting needs to be checked or you can uh, and then you can also see that what cities are they coming from where do you get most of the traffic it can mean a lot of things to based on the nature of your website if you are a blog so you will understand that okay my uh, blog is attracting traffic from these cities so it's relevant for them so you can accordingly create strategies to tackle that and then we have like overview we had demographics browser which takes reports from all of these but again like i told you in overview gives you like graphs and um, interesting tables the data in interesting tables but you can dig into each let's say users per day let's say new users city country geography here and it will give you data in tabular form i will let you to go and explore this on your own because it's all basic stuff for example if i click on demographics here if i click on age it will show me a table based on age how many users are coming from each age group and how many users in this particular date range which i mentioned before it's very important and then you will see new users how many sessions how many bounce rate on pages per session average uh, session duration and you will see e-commerce uh, goals as well for example how many transactions how much revenue was generated and what is conversion e-commerce conversion rate which is means that people who visit your website out of them how many bought a product which means in this case 5.3 percent people bought a product out of everyone who landed on the website 
now also what you can do is if you need this data in an excel file you go to any report select your date range you can click on export and you can download this data in a pdf or excel sheet or google sheets or csv so you can do all of that and you can also click on share and you can share it as a pdf to a particular email address and they will receive an email with this particular pdf or excel file whichever you want so that's about um, for example a detailed report with an audience now one thing you have to understand is <clears throat> here these in reports are interesting for example in this case let's say if i analyze bounce rate which is the lowest is for 35.244 age now which means that the products i'm selling on my website are most engaging for this age group because their bounce rate is low now if you see that the highest bounce rate is for 65 plus which means people who are age 65 and above when they come to my website 50 percent of them just abandon the page and they just go back to another website or close the browser which is not as engaging as 35 to 44 so there is a huge difference 38 percent and 50 percent in bounce rate so these are the insights you get here or for example let's say um pages per session now if you see it is highest for again 35 to 44 people of this age group when they visit my website they on an average visit seven pages on my website which means they check different products they check different details however it's lowest for again 65 and above so it gives you an idea of the persona of the audience which is most engaging with your website one you can set priorities and uh, create your website around to be more engaging towards them and you will understand what's working as well as you will find opportunities you know i need to put something for this age group as well because their bounce rate is high and average page session is low which means it's not as engaging so this is an opportunity for me so you can identify opportunities like this i'll not go through each of them because they are again the same thing which we discussed in the overview but a more detailed and in tabular form so i'll let you explore this because you will have access to this view as well so i'll let you explore to see what all details you see there then i go to acquisition again in acquisition as i mentioned before if i click on overview it will give me an idea about where my traffic is coming from for example here if you see that 87 percent of my traffic on google merchandise store for which we are looking at the google analytics of uh, we get 87 percent from direct traffic which is it's not through any paid campaign so people directly either have bookmarked or they directly go to google merchandise store.com whatever the website is and paid search which means google ads campaign search campaign 9.9 percent .9 traffic and display campaigns we are getting 2.2 percent other affiliates uh, a smaller percentage and others this gives you an idea in one look that the all the traffic that's coming to your website what are their sources where are they coming from so for example you see okay for the next quarter we need 20 percent of the in increment in traffic from paid ads so you'll be able to understand how many users we need how many clicks so the, how much budget we roughly need and it will show you users per day that how many users we, did we visit did visit your website uh, in this duration and conversions how many people bought products if you see here for example december 9 was not the uh, day where you generated highest traffic which is 3800 but again here on december 10 december 10 here was 3300 which was not one of the highest and but december 10 you your conversion rate was really high which means the e-commerce i mean 7.5 percent on this date converted on your website on other days for example you have four percent which means there was something on your website on december 10 probably there were new products uploaded probably there was an offer because as a website owner you would know that so you can always relate it your conversion rates to what what did you do on 10 to understand it will be a learning for you okay when we do this we have a high conversion rate accordingly you can set your strategies 
then again uh, it will show you direct page search division between users new users and sessions and then all these details again you can uh, go through but we are in overview let's go to each of these sections the most important one within acquisition is within all traffic you go to source medium this is probably the most commonly used report in google analytics so if i click on here this gives you an idea one for this date range the traffic details again which we checked but it will tell you what was the source and what was the medium of the users for example because it's google merchandise store uh 87 percent of the traffic came directly which had no source as direct and none direct none as i mentioned before would be users who have bookmarked your website who directly type in your uh, uh url and then we have google cpc google cpc would be uh google search ads there are 4710 users who came from this so this report is very important for you if you are running a campaign a google cpc campaign now you can always relate the performance is my google cpc traffic as good as my organic or uh, organic traffic it cannot be but as close at as is it is it's a good thing i mean it should be somewhere close but there should not be a drastic uh, difference between the performance for example let's see here now if i see from my organic traffic the bounce rate is 42.9 percent and google cpc is 58 percent which is okay which is within bearable limits if this was like 80 percent then there was something wrong with google campaign either my targeting was wrong or the keyword selection was wrong or something because the traffic that was coming from that campaign was not right now if you see here pages per session uh, the people who come from direct sources have 5.51 pages per session they visit 5.5 pages and the traffic that comes from google ads visit 4.3 pages which is again within bearable limits so there should not be any drastic change up to 20 30 percent difference between organic and any paid campaign is usually uh, within bearable limits and if you see as well the traffic that's coming from direct channels they spend on an average 3.32 seconds 3 minutes 32 seconds and google uh, traffic from google with they they spend on an average 2.14 2 minutes and 14 seconds which is again within bearable limits and dfa cpm would mean <coughs> the campaigns that are running in campaign managers and then partners and affiliates would mean the any campaigns that you are running with affiliates so you can monitor all this and you can also see that how much revenue did you generate from each of the source now for example we generated twenty six thousand dollars in this date range from google cpc traffic now you would obviously know how much you invested in google uh, ads if your google ads and google analytics are not connected so you will be able to uh, kind of create a return on ad investment if you have spent let's say uh, two thousand dollars and you have generated twenty six thousand dollars from google traffic so you'll be able to check that what is the profit margin and what is um, the ultimate uh, uh, return on ad spend and if you see that we have very less traffic on uh, dcm affiliate and thus there are no conversions as well because google just invests on google cpc so this is a very interesting report you can download it as well here you can click on export and download now for example we are running partners and affiliate campaigns here okay if there are multiple affiliates we are working with you can always click on this and it can show you here for example i'll use secondary dimension as campaign what campaign is it if we have used different campaign names for each of them so it says data share promo so obviously whoever is running these campaigns the marketing team of google they would know what this campaign is and they can check the details now as a general rule usually when you run campaigns with different partners you set up these parameters in the url for example if i am running a campaign and i'm redirecting traffic to senator viran ads.com when i give this click because for example if i'm running this a campaign in google ads i'll have to use a click through url there so let's say 
anyone who clicks on this ad should go to sanitaryviranads.com. There's something called UTM parameters, which the campaign managers and performance executives know. They kind of add the parameters that that source is Google, uh, medium is CPC, campaign is Senator Viran ads summer campaign. So you set these parameters to each URL. In Facebook, you will set source as Facebook. Affiliates, you are working with affiliate one, you will set as, let's say, promo fix, bliss media. So here in Google Analytics, you will be able to see each separately, uh, traffic details separately for each of them. So in here, I will see, uh, because this is source and medium of the traffic. So any traffic, for example, if I'm running a campaign with bliss media, I selected source as uh, bliss and medium as CPM. So I'll see bliss slash CPM here and I'll see their traffic details. So Google Analytics, will tell you if you are running a campaign on different platforms working with affiliates uh, let's say you have one camp sms campaign and the url you gave to the sms provider is senatorviranads.com forward slash source sms medium is x whatever the company name is so here you will see all the traffic here listed as uh, because this is source medium it will be as sms uh, slash x so you can know that what kind of traffic how much traffic is each source getting you what is the quality of that traffic so that you can tell them listen uh, we did not get any leads from your source or if you are working on cpl basis cost per lead so you can always track that they claim that we got you 100 leads you can always track that here for each source separately you can always download this and that's about source medium which is the most important now again if you want to segregate the data based on the campaign names you can do that you click on let's say campaign you click on all campaigns it will show you a list of all campaigns you are running let's say for example i'm running a search campaign i'm running a summer campaign for example um, i'm running a summer campaign i'm running a jackets campaign i'm running a blankets campaign let's say i'm an e-commerce uh, uh, website owner so i can always click on all campaigns and it will show me all the campaigns and their traffic and all these details similarly for example google is running these campaigns now they are using a particular syntax to name their campaigns they would know though what all these campaigns are for and how much they are investing on each campaign but they can check all the details like how much revenue generated traffic bounce rate and quality of the traffic and also if you have google ads your google ads account connected to analytics then you can directly go to google ads here and you can check reports based on campaign level one you can check all the cpc and all those reports you run in google ads but it will also show you post click details of that for example in there is a google ads connected here there is a campaign phr in google ads you can see that how many clicks how many how much cost how much was spent how much was cpc but it in here in google analytics it will relate to each of the campaign in your google ads and it will show you post click analysis how many users landed on the website out of those clicks how many sessions did they generate what was the bounce rate of that traffic which you will not be able to see in google ads so if you have a google ads account you can for free connected to google analytics and you will be able to see these kind of reports as well then again we have social section but i will uh, let you explore this and uh, it's very interesting and it's very straightforward any report you go to you will see user sessions bounce rates page views transactions and revenue so you just change the kind of the dimensions but you check only these details are available in analytics then again we go to behavior which is also interesting it gives you details about your website once the users came to your website how did they navigate through your website for example behavior flow is important here it kind of tells you for example from your home page you had 23000 users in this date range december 1 to december 12 out of those nine uh, 90 percent was drop off they dropped off from your website but 9.1 percent went through to this page for example this says not set or google so for your website you can click on any of these details group details it will tell you which website for example it says not set here but if i click on it it will show me what was the website url shop.googlemerchandisestore.com i don't know why it's not working but ideally it can tell you for example all the people who came to your home which other pages did they go to out of which how did many dropped off there how many went to next page for example here 
I say group details it says Google so again it says Google merchandise store com Google so I don't know why this link is not working but for your website it will exactly show you a behavior flow where are the users entering your website how many of those are going dropping off how many are going to the next page and what is that page and if you look at overview here you can see kind of what is the page title what how many users on each of the pages and how many page views for each of your uh, pages on your website you can check all these details that if a certain page has high bounce rate and a certain product page has high bounce rate low bounce rate so you can analyze whatever you want as far as you understand what these reports are which is very straightforward then you can go to site content you can again drill down i mean the same overview report for each page and here the icon you see here if you are not able to understand what this page is you click on here for example like i told you google analytics will skip the first domain it only show forward slash basket dot html if i click on here you see shop google merchandise store dot com is the main url which google will skip so this is the page we are talking about basket.com google will always skip the first uh, main domain so you will be able to understand so this is google merchandise store forward slash source html quick view these are the pages so you can drill down your reports to each page and there are a lot of other options exit pages what were the landing pages and what was the site speed of each page so you can click on overview it will tell you what was the average site load time for each browser so for example if you see something strange here let's say amazon uh, edge or safari is 3.13 seconds it takes 3.13 seconds to load your website on edge but on firefox it's eight so this is something you can highlight to your website development team see this is really strange what is the reason maybe there is some reason but you need to tell them see there is something odd here they need to check why this is happening you can do that based on your country as well you can tell them see in this country the page load time is high i don't know maybe uh, any server issue or whatever so you can always tell them and this will help you as a website owner and analytics uh, owner and then again you can do it based on the page how much time does each page uh, take to load you can see if there is some pages which are, which are taking more than usual so it's important for those kind of things it's mostly about your website and uh, there are experiments publishers but i'm showing you the most important things like i told you the most important is probably acquisition all traffic and source medium but these are some reports you can explore as well so go to this uh, demo account and explore as much as you can it it's really interesting download reports check the details so find correlations and then in conversions as i told you it's all about goals what you can do is you set up different goals in your website like i told you for example as senator we run ads um the goal for me would be how many people spent 30 minutes or more on my website so i can accordingly create a goal which is like a bit advanced analytics which we will cover in the course probably but this is just to inform you if you are just uh, using google analytics for reporting you are work for a company there's someone else who is uh, responsible of setup so you can uh, kind of understand that i'll show you where which all goals are already created so this will tell you that you will have to create funnel visualization which usually analytics people in companies advanced analytics uh, implementation they do it they create different funnels based on the user journey on your website and it will show you how many people entered your website how many people kind of proceeded to billing and shipping how many people proceeded to payment and how many people finally uh, purchase completed the purchase so you will see all of this in kind of the funnel approach that how many people are dropping off on different sections let's say if we analyze here uh, how many people checked your info.html page how many added to the basket how many added went to home store html and how many finally ended up purchasing so this is the funnel that has been created keeping in mind their website journey so you can have it created for your website if not done already as well so i would let you conversion to explore conversion on your own as well it's a bit advanced analytics in terms of setup but obviously generating reports it's pretty straightforward 
and these are all the types of reports that's five reports in google analytics which are available there and then one what once we are done with this then we will directly first jump to admin admin is like settings of your phone settings of your computer so it's like the general settings of your uh google analytics account uh even if for example you work for a company does not necessarily mean that you will have access to all the settings here because usually if there is a team or a person who's handling google analytics they will have uh when, once they add access to, uh, add users to the account or they share access with you they probably will select a role for you as uh, uh, access to reporting only so you will not have access to any of these as well for the scope of this video the only thing that makes sense uh, to explore here is one is goals you click on goals and you will be able to understand that what are the goals created in our account if we create kind of conversion report so there is engaged users created there's entered checkout purchase completed registrations and smart goals obviously for your websites uh, it, there'll be different goals which will make sense to create goals are like kind of events which you want to create and track and re later reference for example if on my website i create one goal as how many people filled a lead form i can relate that to later that if i have four campaigns running how many leads were filled from traffic from google ads and facebook ads or organic traffic so whatever you want to see in those kind of reports you create goals for that uh, creating goals is not a scope of this video so i will just skip for now but there is something you can um, one more thing you can do is google ads linking if you have a google ads and you want to link it to analytics it's pretty straightforward you go to admin you come to property section here and first if you have to create uh, link one particular property make sure that you select the right one within the drop down here and then you click on google ads linking it'll ask you your google ads id you put it there and you will get an email you will have to accept it and it's all linked and then you will be able to report like we did in uh, google ads so that's about admin the other tab we have here is discover which is like a page where you see all if there is any new apps there is any new features in google analytics and even courses as well for example here get more out of google analytics so you can download the app here you can access the google analytics demo account which we are already in you will there's something called custom alerts it will tell you how to set custom alerts if uh, you want to do it in google analytics then we have google analytics academy where you have different courses the link to google analytics help center and blog and all those details so this is something you can explore but this is like where they tell you about new features you can do courses and stuff like that attribution is in beta you might not even see it in your google analytics so i'll skip it for now but it's mostly about like advanced analytics where you can select different attribution models you can report on if uh, data driven attribution model and last click attribution model and difference between the data if you don't understand what these terms mean just skip it it's not important for you then and then we have home home i skipped in the beginning because home is like uh, a place where you see overview of all the reports we already saw all these reports like this is from real time this is acquisition this is uh, from acquisition again so this is from behavior so it gives you like a snapshot of your account overall just explore this as well so it'll give you an idea as well one of the interesting things in home is this one here it's called uh, the heat map where you will see that on an average where which days and which times you have maximum users for example for last 30 days strange enough from friday 1 pm to 2 pm is the where we get the highest traffic on our website which in our case is google merchandise store and during the days 8 am to 6 pm we have kind of good traffic which you see here the more the blue the higher the traffic within these hours so it gives you a heat map that within different days of the week and uh, 24 hours where do you get most of the traffic from so you can select here let's say i want to do last 90 days so usually if your website is f f following a pattern you will see the same see for there is probably something wrong in nine last 30 days maybe there is an offer or whatever but overall when i check for three months it is uh, weekends like saturdays and sundays we get less traffic because you see here 
less blue and on uh, weekdays during uh, 4 a.m and 8 a.m of your time zone maybe you are getting traffic from all over the world so but this will show you your time zone where you are getting most of the traffic from then we have customization where you can kind of create uh, dashboards which is the same like this but you based on for example you want to create a dashboard based on a device you want to show a pie chart where you will see traffic uh, from mobile devices and desktop for example there are already some uh, dashboards created here but you can create anything you want like you want to create a dashboard with a pie chart a table and want to see a particular data so for example uh, there is one uh, device dashboard create so probably <coughs> every day you just want to have a sneak peek on how many desktop users how many mobile and tablet users and their respective reports like this uh, revenue by device category revenue per user these are the metrics which are important for you you can just for once create a dashboard and just anytime you want to see this report you just click on the dashboard it will update and show you in the real time the same report so you don't have to create it again every time so apart from this uh, i would say one of the important things you have to remember is you can also schedule reports for example i want to know every day for last 30 days i want to get this report or last one week so what i can do here is i can select let's say last 30 days okay and i can say uh, share and here this is how we uh, schedule so i select my email address or my boss's email address or whoever uh, okay pdf is okay for me frequency once i can say daily daily i should uh, receive this report if i click on i'm not a robot and click on send so what happens is whatever email address i put here will get a pdf report of this for last 30 days so today last 30 days after tomorrow they will get last 30 days which will be including today as well so going on it will always send last 30 days or last seven days or whatever you want to schedule not daily you get it weekly you get it monthly okay so whatever you want you can schedule that report so that's honestly like the basics of google analytics i tried to cover everything but just make sure that you explore on your own go to this demo account it's free and i hope that was helpful thank you so much i'll see you in the next one